Hey everyone, Brian here with Fellow. Today's coffee drop features JBC Coffee Roasters Kiandu Kenya. We've tasted pineapple, sweet honey, and black tea. And today I have Haley, she'll be brewing on AeroPress. We've seen your comments, we're doing AeroPress this week. But if you stick around, I'll show you my espresso brew guide for this coffee. Today's also the launch of our matte white oat, as you can see here. Uh, so check that out on the website. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to text us back, leave comments below. We'll get back to you. But for now, I'm gonna switch over to Haley. She'll show you how to brew this JBC coffee with AeroPress. Today we're talking about JBC's Kiandu Kenya. Towards the uh, medium end of the lighter roast spectrum, not super, super heavy in body, but not a, and so not a true medium roast. Um, really consistent on the roast level here too, if we're just kind of flipping this around. And we're gonna brew on AeroPress today. So I'll take you through my recipe that I'm using. We tried something a little bit new out and it's tasting really, really good with this coffee. It's really bringing out um, kind of a plum back end to this blood orange and like palmello middle. Um, super, super nice acidity present. It's present, but not too intense. Really, really just delicious. All right, so um, I'm actually using a World AeroPress Champions recipe for this one. Um, her name is Paulina Musa. One notch above two on Ode to grind for this. And if we're looking at the grind setting, sort of a medium fine, I suppose. Just about right there. So anything close to that will do. Don't wanna to go too fine for AeroPress, it'll be hard to press um, and easy to over extract. For this recipe, I am using 35 grams of coffee. I'm brewing at 195 degrees, a little bit lower temperature to bring out that sweetness that's present in this coffee. And I am going to brew for a total of one minute and 30 seconds, agitating at approximately 30 seconds, 35 seconds. I'm gonna pour this in here and I'm going to once again brew with 195 degree water. So I'm deviating it a little bit from the original recipe. I'm um, taking a little bit of liberties, it's not exact, but I'm still brewing at 195 instead of my normal 205 to bring out this like natural sweetness that's present in this Kenya. All right, flatten out my bed of grounds, tear out the scale, and here we go. We're gonna hit 150 grams of water starting now. Beautiful. 150.2, I'll take it. I like to be within three tenths of a gram above or under. So right at 30, between 30 and 35 seconds, I'm actually gonna agitate it. Just gently, making sure that everything is soaking evenly in there. You don't want uneven extraction, and this is how to prevent it with AeroPress. And sort of just count to 10 in your head. 10 Mississippi, if you so choose. All right, and then we're going to wait until a minute and 35 seconds. Preparation, I'm going to take my whole assembly and set up off of the Akaya scale because you do not want to press down on your Akaya scale. It's the quickest way to throw that out of calibration or potentially break your scale, depending on how hard you're pressing. I'm gonna go ahead and actually seal off the chamber here. I'm not gonna press down just yet, but I'm going to put the plunger inside to finish up that last bit of extraction. And we're at a minute 30, so I'm going to start very slowly plunging now. Now with AeroPress, you wanna make sure that you are applying a steady, even pressure all the way down, whatever that pressure is for you, as long as it's steady and even. Prisma doesn't drip. All right, and we're not quite done yet. So now that we have a super concentrated dose, I'm actually gonna dilute it with 170 grams of 195 degree water, and then we are ready to enjoy it. So, so we're gonna go 170 grams of 195 degree water to dilute. Get like a delicious drip Americano. But since we're diluting, it's less imperative that we're precise here, 170.5. The recipe calls for, I believe, between 150 or 60 and 200 grams of water extra, so we're still right in that nice middle ground. 
which is why I'm not upset that I am actually 0.4 grams, uh, four tenths of a gram above. All right, just about ready to enjoy. Give it a good swirl for aeration and also to get everything mixed up and together in there and uh, let's take a taste. Okay, this is super fragrant. Yeah, welcome, right. to, welcome right. to really aromatic <laughs> welcome coffee. Welcome to aromatic coffee. All right, cheers. Cheers, it's extremely aromatic, which is really nice. Like, I feel like this would fill your house in the morning with, this is fruit bomb territory. It's not really a fruit bomb tasting to me though. I mean, it's got, it does have a lot of like blood orange kind of in the middle, a little bit of like a nice present acidity without being too forward. Um, and the slight round plum or like purple fruit sweetness at the mm. end. Yeah, it's a very pleasant acidity. <laughs> yeah, and it's very, it finishes and then it's just, it, it doesn't linger. It just tapers off very clean. This is just, it's wild. It's a washed coffee that almost treads the line of a natural or like what I want from a natural, but it's washed. So that's where I think you get the really mild acidity, super not aggressive in any mm. way, shape or form, but also very like complex and interesting. After you press down with Prismo, you get that concentrated brew. You can play around with how much you dilute and you can just figure out how much or how strong of a brew you want. But I'm finding with uh, just diluting 170. 170, yep. This is really like a very rich filter coffee that I'm tasting here. Agreed. And it's really tasty. Agreed. I don't want to say too, um, if you're using the standard attachment, I highly recommend the inverted method of brewing. So you would do exactly what I just did, except for at the end, you would put the standard attachment on with your pre-wet filter and turn over and then plunge into your vessel. Would also recommend you can just try the concentrated brew by itself if you, you want a super rich cup. Agreed. Especially with Prismo too, if you want a super rich, fluffy, like mimicking espresso texture at home. It's not gonna get you total, like super thick sedimenty espresso texture, but it'll get you like a fluffier mouthfeel for sure. Um, highly recommend trying that concentrated dose too. It's be very, very much a, a lot of purple fruit at the end, <laughs> a lot of it. I'm gonna show you some of the flavors that we're tasting in this coffee on our wall. So we're gonna go fruity and then probably like where? Here we is like maybe a little bit of prune, like purple fruit. Um, definitely some like orange grapefruity situation, just like a little bunch of citrus, maybe a little Concord grape, not, not green grape, but Concord grape. A little tiny bit of like, tiny, tiny bit of this, but mostly just overall fruity. But I want to thank Haley for joining us again this week, talking about J JVC Yandu Kenya's. Now I'll be switching over to me brewing this coffee as an espresso. Those recipes will also be in the description below. So I've really been enjoying this Kiandu Kenya as an espresso, and I'll be showing you my two recipes. In espresso, what I've been able to taste is it starts off more of like a purple fruit when it's hot, and then when it cools down, the pineapple acidity really starts to develop. So it contrasts between these two completely different fruits. And here are my two espresso recipes. The first one is for those of you with more entry level machines such as the Gaja Classic. Just pull 18 grams in, 36 out in about 25 to 27 seconds. This results in a very impactful espresso to me. I, I'm get, I get this crazy grape note that comes up front. And then once the espresso starts to cool down, I'm getting pineapples. Uh, just very sharp, acidic presentation of pineapples. I think that's very interesting in a one to two shot. And I think it's worth experimenting with a longer ratio here, especially even with a machine that can only do a flat profile here. I would also suggest you even kind of coarsen up the grind size and pull at a lower pressure if possible. The shot might not look very pretty, but because this has such defined uh, acidic presentation, in my opinion, it's worth seeing what happens. Now, here's my recipe for those of you with more advanced machines like the Flare Espresso 58. I am pulling 18 grams in, 54 out, one to three ratio, and I am grinding actually fairly fine. So this allows me to do a 10 second pre-infusion at around three bars or until you see the first few drops of espresso, about one to two grams of that pre-infusion espresso. 
and then I ramp up to eight bars. Once my pressure ramps up to eight bars, I let the puck naturally degrade as I go and ramp down to about six bars. So it's a shot that's around 45 to 55 seconds long, depending on what grinder you have. Due to that longer ratio and that pre-infusion, all of that, I'm getting incredibly clear presentation of pineapple, especially when the espresso cools down. Even when hot, the espresso does have a little bit of this grape note, but I kind of am chasing this more acidic pineapple note because I really like that and that's why I really like pulling long especially with coffees like this. Otherwise that was JBC Coffee Roasters Kiandu Kenya. Uh, those were two espresso profiles. I hope you enjoyed listening to me talk about how to pull these pull this coffee but if you have any questions with uh, dialing in or anything you've seen today please let us know. We are here to help. Thank you for spending the time to watch the video and we hope to see you around next week.